Assalamu alaikum everybody, Americans, people of the world, Ethiopians, Eritreans, Africans, and everybody. Uh, I was really surprised to hear the debate between President Biden and Joe Donald Trump and definitely didn't go the way I expected it. I do believe America is really in serious political crisis. I do believe personally. I have never seen this kind of chaos ever since I came to this country in 1977. I think it was 1978, I believe. 45 years of living in America, going to college in actually performing in different kind of uh, professional life. Till this point in time, I've never seen this kind of crazy debate. And me, as one American, basically, I'm scared to the, to, the, to the limit because I don't trust Donald Trump because he's a convicted criminal. And yet, I didn't like Biden either because he created a lot of chaos around the world, all over the world. His politics outside was completely devastating, beginning from Ukraine and all the way to the Middle East. I don't want to talk a whole a lot about that, but the debate was so surprising. I do believe Biden had a lot of weapons to use. Of course, Trump had a lot of weapons to use too. The question is who used them very well. By the way, was Biden fit enough to stand, to stand this kind of debate? Age is a factor, definitely, but they're almost comparable, almost the same age-wise. That shouldn't be a problem, really. And taking into consideration the kind of stress Donald Trump took during the trials, criminal trials, and yet coming out like this, I was so surprised. Ladies and gentlemen, let's watch it. Let's watch it. Thank you for your number one. Number two, you got two trillion dollar tax cut benefited the very wealthy. What I'm going to do is fix the tax system. For example, we have a thousand trillionaires in America. I mean, billionaires in America. And what's happening? They're in a situation where they, in fact, pay 8.2 percent in taxes. If they just paid 24 percent, 25 percent, either one of those numbers, they'd raise 500 million dollars billion dollars, I should say, in a 10-year period. We'd be able to right wipe out his debt. We'd be able to help make sure that all those things we need to do, child care, elder care, making sure that we continue to... ...and mental institutions. Well, definitely, he scored the point right here because about 1,000, he said billionaires, no, three, yeah, billionaires, paying about 8% tax while a lot of Americans are suffering. Okay, that was a good point. Because Donald Trump wants to raise taxes. I mean, to, to save taxes to the billionaires. That's obvious. The poll here, I think he scored the point. But let's see the reaction. To come into our country and destroy our country. President Trump, we will get to immigration uh, later in this block. President Biden, uh, I want to give you an opportunity to respond to this question about the national debt. He had the largest national debt of any president in a four-year period, number one. Number two. But also, and because that has to do with other things, you got to get elected. The problem they have is they're radical because they will take the life of a child in the eighth month, the ninth month, and even after birth. After birth, if you look at the former governor of Virginia, he was willing to do this. He said, and the country is now coming together on this issue. Look, there's so many young women who have been, including a young woman who just murdered and he, he went to the funeral uh, the idea that she was murdered by a by a, by an immigrant coming in to, they talk about that but here's the deal there's a lot of young women to be raped by their by their in-laws by their by, by their spouses well <laughs> Donald Trump is not is not an easy guy he's a guy who can fabricate a lot of things he can create issues of his own and he can give you all kinds of stuff he can throw to you. No, Biden didn't challenge him at this point. Yeah, Biden was so weak. I think he was physically weak. I don't believe it's a health issue to my understanding. I don't think he can sustain this kind of pressure anymore. Actually, he said it before. I mean, right after this debate. Anyway, uh, it was very shaky performance in my opinion. 
it's cool. Brothers and sisters, by just it's, it's just ridiculous, and they can do nothing about it. And they try to arrest them when they cross state lines. Thank you. There have been many young women murdered by the same people he allows to come across our border. We have a border that's the most dangerous place anywhere in the world, considered the most dangerous place anywhere in the world. And he opened it up, and these killers are coming into our country, and they are raping and killing women. And it's a terrible thing. As far as the abortions concerned, a number of migrants have illegally crossed the southern border on your watch, overwhelming border states and overburdening cities such as New York and Chicago, and in some cases causing real safety and security concerns. Given that, why should voters trust you to solve this crisis? Because we worked very hard to get a bipartisan agreement that not only changed all of that, but made sure that we are in a situation where you had no circumstance where they could come across the border with the number of border police there are now. We significantly increased the number of asylum officers. Significantly, by the way, the border patrol endorsed me, endorsed my position. In addition to that, we found ourselves in a situation where when he was president, he was taking, separating babies from their mothers, putting them in cages, making sure they were, and the families were separated. That's not the right way to go. What I've done since I've changed the law, what's happened? I've changed it in a way that now you're in a situation where there are 40% fewer people coming across the border illegally. It's better than when he left office. And I'm going to continue to move until we get the total ban on the, 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 the total initiative relative to what we're going to do with more border patrol and more uh, asylum officers. Well, Mr. Biden, to tell you honestly, you have a few points right here. Of course, like the time... The deportation was going on, a lot of kids were suffocating. A lot of mothers were suffering. Too many cries. And I thought that was probably the karma. That Donald Trump was suffering to the point of going to the criminal justice system and criminalized as a felon, as a convicted felon. But sir, how about the, the number of illegal immigrants engulfing America coming breaking through all the borders in the south and suffocating the whole country basically from new york to california and all over the places and the crimes that were going on crimes that were associated with that necessarily they didn't bring crimes to the united states of america but suffering can force them to be criminals as well. and we've seen some crimes sir uh I don't think the border issue was a very good point for you to fight on this one. And you cannot go for your advantage, although you cannot avoid it. Let's see the response. President Trump? Uh, I really don't know what he said at the end of that sentence. I don't think he knows what he said either. Look, we had the safest border in the history of our country. The border, all he had to do was leave it. All he had to do was leave it. He decided to open up our border, open up our country to people that are from prisons, people that are from mental institutions, insane asylum, terrorists. We have the largest number of terrorists coming into our country right now, all terrorists, all over the world, not just in South America, all over the world. They come from the Middle East, everywhere, all over the world, they're pouring in. And this guy just left it open. And he didn't need legislation because I didn't have legislation. I said, close the border. We had the safest border in history. In that final couple of months of my presidency, we had, according to Border Patrol, who is great, and by the way, who endorsed me for president, but I won't say that, but they endorsed me for president. Brandon, just speak to him. But look, we had the safest border in history. Now we have the worst border in history. There's never been anything like it. And people are dying all over the place, including the people that are coming up Thank in Thank you, caravans. President Trump. Uh, president Biden? The only well, my opinion right here is, of course, I'm not crazy to trust Mr. Trump because Mr. Trump is actually... Uh, I don't know what to say, pathological liar, but he has lied a lot of times, and we have witnessed it. But the issue that he brought here makes a lot of sense, though. He tried at least to stop the illegal immigrants to the United States. It's a crime he did. The worst thing, the baddest thing he did was actually deporting mothers and kids without any safety. That was the problem. As to our borders deep south at this point in time, Mr. Biden didn't do a good job. Didn't do a good job. Let's see how he responds, though. 
terrorist who's done anything crossing the border is one who came along and killed three under his administration. By the way, one of the things that's disgusting here is he just stereotypically categorized them as terrorists. Everybody's a terrorist that comes to the United States of America from South. Okay, all the Arabs that are coming here are terrorists. But of course, that was Trump's style. Trump's style of attacking the truth itself. It was all lies, man. Majority just innocent human beings trying to chill in America. Very few people are criminals, maybe. Very few. But he magnified the issue to the point of stereotypically attacking every human being that comes to the United States. As a, as a Kill Al Qaeda person come in and his administration killed three American soldiers. Kill three American soldiers. That's the only terrorist that's there. I'm not saying that no terrorist ever got through, but the idea they're emptying their prisons, we're, le- we're welcoming these people. That's simply not true. There's no data to support what he said. Once again, he's exaggerating, he's lying. President Trump, um, staying on the topic of immigration, you've said that you're going to carry out, quote, the largest domestic deportation operation in American history, unquote. Does that mean that you will deport every undocumented immigrant in America, including those who have jobs, including those whose spouses are citizens, and including those who have lived here for decades? And if so, how will you do it? Uh, Just one second. He said we killed three people. The people we killed are al-Baghdadi and Soleimani the two greatest terrorists, biggest terrorists anywhere in the world. And it had a huge impact on everything, not just border, on everything. He's the one that killed people with the bad water, including hundreds of thousands of people dying and also killing our citizens when they come in. We we are living right now in a rat's nest. They're killing our people in New York, in California, in every state in the union because we don't have borders anymore. Every state is now a border. And because of his ridiculous, insane and very stupid policies, people are coming in and they're killing our citizens at a level that we've never seen. We call it migrant crime. I call it Biden migrant crime. They're killing our citizens at a level that we've never seen before. And you're reading it like these three incredible young girls over the last few days. One of them, I just spoke to the mother and they just had the funeral for this girl, 12 years old. This is horrible what's taken place. What's taken place in our country, we're literally an uncivilized country now. He doesn't want it to be. He just doesn't know. He opened the borders. Nobody's ever seen anything like. And we have to get a lot of these people out or we have to get them out fast because they're going to destroy our country. Just take a look at where they're living. They're living in luxury hotels in New York City and other places. Our veterans are on the street. They're dying because he doesn't care about our veterans. He doesn't care. He doesn't like the military at all. And he doesn't care about our veterans. Nobody been worse. I had the highest approval rating for veterans taking care of the VA. He has the worst. He's gotten rid of all the things that I approved. Choice that I got through Congress. All of the different things I approved, they abandoned. We had by far the highest. And now it's down in less than half because he's done all these great things that we did. And I think he did it just because I approved it, which is crazy. But he has killed so many people at our border by allowing all of these people to come in. Well, in my opinion, he scored a lot of points here, definitely. Oh, that was his strong card, actually. The immigration, okay? The illegal uh, border, whatever, uh, coming to the United States from South America, uh, from Central America, from all over the places. This was the strongest point, strongest card he had, and I think he articulated it very well. Well, Biden, I don't know what happened. Well, basically, he was just, he was not making sense, not a whole lot of sense, talking about three people that did, that were killed. Well, everybody's life, of course, is a concern to good human beings, but like, to the point, that Trump attacked. Actually, it didn't balance out for me. I do believe that Trump scored a lot of points here. Whether he tells the truth or not, I still don't believe Trump. I don't believe him. He can exaggerate. He can give you numbers. He can call names. He can just accuse But he can articulate it. He has a lot of listeners in America, and I think he did a good job. Physically speaking, he looked better to me. 
that Biden, I think, is Biden, well, I don't know if he's healthy at this point in time. Let's go. It's a very sad day in America. President Biden, you have the mic. Every single thing he said is a lie. Every single one. For example, veterans are a hell of a lot better off since I passed the PACT Act. One million of them now have insurance and their families have it. Their families have it because what happened, whether it was Agent Orange or burn pits in um, France for D-Day. And I spoke to all about those heroes that died. I went to the World War II cemetery, World War I cemetery he refused to go to. He was standing with his four-star general and he told me, he said, I don't want to go in there because they're a bunch of losers and suckers. My son was not a loser, was not a sucker. You're the sucker. You're the loser. President Trump. Uh, first of all, that was a made-up quote, suckers and losers. They made it up. It was in a third-rate magazine. Oh, I really do believe it. here at this point in time, he had gotten a little bit emotional. The, the problem was starting to kick in. The articulations that Trump brought to this table, to this, to this debate, basically is starting to hit him hard. I think so, because he started now pushing a little bit. And let's see how... Trump responds. He was failing like many of these magazines. Uh, he made that up. He put it in commercials. We've notified him. We had 19 people that said I didn't say it. And think of this. Who would say I'm at a cemetery or I'm talking about our veterans? Because nobody's taking better care. I'm so glad this came up and he brought it up. There's nobody that's taken better care of our soldiers than I have. To think that I would in front of generals and others say suckers and losers. We have 19 people that said it was never said by me. Yeah. It was made up by him, just like Russia, Russia, Russia was made up, just like the 51 intelligence agents are made up, just like the new thing with the 16 economists are talking. It's the same thing. 51 intelligence agents said that the laptop was Russia disinformation. It wasn't. That came from his son, Hunter. It wasn't Russia disinformation. He made up the suckers and losers, so he should apologize to me right now. Four star general standing your side was on your staff. <laughs> I do believe that Trump can he choose anything, man. If you can sustain, he can throw bumps on you if you can handle it. He can just set fire on your life if you can just get away from it. It's unbelievable the way he just throws things up. He disqualified the whole thing. He actually gave the burden of the accusation. Right to him, you know what I'm saying? He gave it to him. He accused him of lying, creating that story. It was an unbelievable show, unbelievable show. I think what I think at this point is probably I will stop here to continue the next shows because it seems to be very interesting to me to do. Uh, I believe, let me see, I do believe, uh, Biden was very shaky in this, in this debate. Uh, whether he was not ready, whether he was physically un, not fit, whether he is ill or he is probably confused or he is, I don't know what it is, but he has an explanation to do. Why, how come he just performed as such a very poor performance? It was all the bullets he had actually against Trump. Although Trump is, he comes at you straight for war and attacks you. He doesn't care. There ain't no morality with, me, with Mr. Trump. I don't see any morality. There is no ethical issues that impede him from saying whatever he wants to say on stage. We've seen him through the years, but the performance of Mr. Biden was extremely disappointing. Very disappointing. Very disappointing. And we're going to continue on this one, and I will come to discuss and give my own opinion. Because there are a lot of issues to come around. International issues, the Ukraine issues, Middle East issues, and all that. Okay, that Trump can use to attack. You understand? In the next discussion, I'll bring that. However, think so far, Trump was more attractive than Biden. I'll see you next time. I'll see you next time. And give me your opinions, man. People, give me your opinions right here. What do you think? How do you think the performance was? How, did, how was the physical, the physical stand? You know, the cosmetics and everything. 
the look, okay? Where, where was the image to the people? How was it between the two? Who looks healthier and who looks uh, a person that can do the performance better, that can perform better as the leader of the United States of America, which means leader of the whole continent, uh, not only here in America, but the whole world, basically. America, president means the president of the whole world, and with this kind of staggering performance, is Biden ready to continue another four years of pressure with bigger magnitude, especially right now. The confrontation is becoming harder. Too many people are angry about the United States, America's policies in Africa, in Asia, all over the places. Russia is teaming up with China. Iran is coming in too. And then North Korea, that's a whole a lot of pressure out there. And the Africans are not really very much content about the United States of America's policy in the continent as a whole and in the countries individually. We're going to see. We're going to see how the debate goes. But uh, it was very disappointing performance for Biden. And I don't know for America what this means. To me, both of them are not really fit to do it, to me. As a person, I ain't going to vote this time. I don't know what you're going to do. Though.